Peace and blessings. This is Lisa Marie of Live Free TV. And I'm laughing because this here, right here, I mean, how free can I be? I mean, I literally took out my extensions and the first time I take my first night that I take my extensions out, excuse me, take my extensions out, um, I don't even want to, I just kind of detangle and then I let it be because it just needs it. And so, yeah, so I've been doing, I'm doing my braids, my extensions for only two weeks. And then I'm gonna do, do my best to do two weeks off. I might not always make two weeks off, but I'm gonna do it definitely for two weeks and then definitely take a break. I'm trying to do two and two because I find that the danger comes in your braids when you keep them in too long. Like that one is where you know it's too late. Your hair's drying out, you know. So, uh, yeah, so I'm excited uh, to, plus I wanted to wash my hair. I didn't wash it, like I said, the first night, I don't even want to touch it. Like, I just want to take this next time this out. So I'm going to wash it tomorrow. Uh, yeah, I hope I have time. Like, I got a life, y'all. I got a freaking life. Like, what? Ugh, I got a life. So tomorrow, if my life starts, I got to pick up the dresses that are ready for the boutique. I got some dresses ready for the boutique. I got some jewelry to pick up that's ready for the boutique. And I need to organize my life in this boutique. Hopefully, I can get this little, not even a big old website, just something, you know, cool and legitimate by June 1st, because that's what I would like to launch in my, you know. And then y'all remember, I'm designing my own placemats. Y'all have my home decor section up in there, my own tablecloths, my own napkins, my own air day. Okay, so with my design logo, Kwame put me on to that today. I was like, yes, you know. It's just so funny, like I tell you, the last name of my family, that the Ghanaian family here, is Ofori. And the last name Kwame is all for it, but they're not related. But that's the way they relate. Like to me, even here, if you and somebody like shares the same last name, but you don't know each other, they for real, for real. I know like we in the States probably be like, we might be related, right? But sometimes we don't ask a lot of questions. Sometimes we do to go further to see. Here they assume if you have the last name, you are related. So you ask a few questions and literally you are related, right? So, you know, it's a it's a meaning and a feeling about it that I really love. And I, I love that, I love that. And I love that, because um, I was so important because we got some business to take care of. I said, okay, I'll see you a little later because Kojo, Christina, this is our day. Monday is our day. They take me to the market. They're going to take me to wherever else I need to go. I got to pick up the curtains that I had some curtains made for the bedrooms. So I pick those up tomorrow. And so anyway, it's our day, you know, and then Christina cleans and does some, I need some rice and beans right about now. Okay, so, uh, and so, yeah, that's our little time together. But I'm gonna do that, and while she at the house, I'm gonna be Kwame, I'm gonna take care of some business, I'm gonna come back. So that's why, I don't know if my hair will get washed tomorrow, but it just feels better right now without the hair, and I love that feeling. So, uh, yeah, y'all, I got a life, I got a life. I am so excited about life. And I wanted to tell you something because I thought about it. Just follow spirit, it will never fail you. Okay, I just had to look at the title. Just follow spirit, it will never it will never fail. Like, I had to tell you this because like, I felt it. That's why I look like this and I'm on here. If I'm 52 years, so a lot of people were saying to me, like, wow, you know, I was, I must, if y'all missed the course tonight, Elacia, she gave so much valuable information about virtual assistant. And a virtual assistant is not necessarily somebody who just does clerical work. Today, she explained to me in a way, I'll just tell you why, a virtual assistant is someone who has anything that they can do for you that you need that you can do virtually. That could be a graphic designer, that could be a HR person, a human resource manager. It's not, it's deep. It could be somebody that helps you write your book so that, because you don't have the grammar on the editor. It could be you can hire an editor just for, you know, and you could be, so this class was important to almost every profession that if needed be, could go online and still survive, function, and maybe even thrive even more. So, so y'all need to, I just want you to know, just please start thinking about that. You know, that's the only thing I can mess with from spirit. Just tell them to take this a little more seriously, what's going on, you know, in the world, and 
prepare to be offline, I mean, or to be online and to be, because that's what's up, right? So, and then, wow, what you're going to find in that is just going to be so beautiful. Uh, so if you did not take the class or you didn't understand somebody was asking me a comment section with a virtual assistant, the way she broke it down was so beautiful. And you can still buy the replay, so $47. Uh, yeah, how to, I want to say how to prosper, but it's something like that. Uh, as a virtual assistant, yeah, it's, it's about to, mm, it, was, it was a great class. But, uh, so yeah, so anyway, um, her class was amazing. Y'all need to come into it. Uh, but my family, so she said something that they, she was like, yeah, Lisa Marie, you know, she's 52, what inspiration. She's inspiring us that you never get to a point in your life where it's like, oh, I know it all, or I don't want it anymore. I'm, I'm going to go there. Not even yet, yeah, both. Don't ever think that you know everything. Don't ever think that you know enough that life is over, because I met people like that. Well, at my age, I've seen it all. Been there, done that. Like they can't even see that even that that looks like the same experience is not the same experience. They cannot see that. They cannot see it. They cannot see that the same experience is not the same experience. And so you have to, if you don't have that hunger, then yeah, maybe a number like an age is gonna stop you or prevent you or make you think that you know it all, all that. You don't wanna know no more. But the actual actual in actuality, I think this is a made up illusion. Made up illusion. Okay, made up uh, kind of picture or narrative, I guess, that you get to a certain age and then you're supposed to be, you know, normal or decent or settled, right? So when you settle, so you just want to settle, I'm going to settle, I'm going to settle down, mm, like you're 55. So why are you settling down? It's like you're 55, right? Why are you settling down? You know, why are you, why are you settling down? And you can move, I mean, 55 today, my mind, my daughter, 55 today, 65 today, 75 today, it just does not look like even 50 years ago. This is what people really, I don't, I think don't realize is that. So this is the result, this youthfulness, whether it's an appearance, attitude, it doesn't matter. Spirit is a byproduct of all those years of, in a sense, a, a, a eating or a nurturing or a taking care of ourselves in ways that our foreparents never could have, would have thought of to do. Some of us were there, we were in the mo the movement, whatever it was, we call it veganism, vegetarianism, you know, whole foodism, slow foodism, like we was about that life and urge for ourselves, our children, some of us in my generation didn't vaccinate the children, home births, like, I mean, the goddess thing, growing our natural hair, growing locks down to the ground, like, I mean, real stuff, messing with crystals, understanding crystals, moon rituals, we, yeah, we were, uh, there's, you did a lot. So in, 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 I mean, you didn't know, but what you was, one part that was going to be guaranteed was that you were probably going to feel more useful and have more energy. Because 52, if that's old and that's in the mind, because I don't, I can't be, I don't know what that feels like. I feel useful and happy and joy. It's amazing that today was a day that I actually knew. Today was a day that I make sure she's okay. Okay. Today was the day that I actually knew. Today was the day that I actually understood that, oh my gosh, this idea of even that you're at a certain age, so you shouldn't be doing certain things, or you know, you get old now, it's too late, or it doesn't matter. Yo, y'all, that's not true. It's not true. So I don't feel 52. I don't know if it's supposed to feel like I, I, I never felt this. I didn't know that I was not going to feel this way or was going to feel this way. I feel younger than ever. I feel alive. I mean, in all my encounters, I've, and I feel like, especially coming to Africa, where a lot just for roll off your shoulders, you know. I mean, I'm thinking about that song by Still Pulse, you know, uh, dashing away those bluesy feelings with the let the world off your shoulders. It's Channel Song Day, but. It is a dope song. I mean, you know, let it all go. Let the world off your shoulder. Like, let it go. And 
Africa it takes a lot of that. If you understood just the color of your skin, how much it is dictating your life in our home country, it's uh, and you don't know because it's not all mental or even physical or, or spiritual. It's more than in all of that and so many. So there's a relaxation first of all. The other thing is too, like everybody I meet, this was from Colombia, from people from Ghana. It didn't matter. Sapelo, Sapelo to that Tobago, every last one of them. It didn't matter. All of them had everybody's, especially, and I noticed this. Everybody's had a somebody that was 106, or 105, or even 100. And it's the same thing here. I mean, check out the diet, and that, but it's mostly I noticed it's the people that was. You know, the Dominican Republic help makes me describe it as the countryside. And Ghana will call it the village. Back in my village, people from my cry all come from the village. Don't get it twisted. They just stay in the cry all the generations before. You know what I'm saying? They from they know they got a village they can go back to or at least connect to or know of, talk about in the history. So the people in the countryside. Which in DR was the black folks, and and in, I don't know. I tell you, Ghana and DR. Now I understand maybe what that call was because there is something, and I mean, everybody might not put it together, but it's a feeling that I get when I people picture when I Kwame went back to his village because it was a funeral, so I passed, and the picture he showed me, and then my and then Hazen's going back to the village or to the countryside where his family's from because it's my past. Uh, it could have been the same picture because it's just identical. It's just, it, it has the same feel because it's still very black. So Dominican Republic, they probably, Dominicans are probably really the most African of everybody and they know that the least sometimes, not all of the Dominicans, a lot of them are very proud and very educated and getting more proud and educated about their Africanness. But the most, I mean, like, so you, most village people are living, they kicking them 100, 106. These are the people that's supposed to be under society, right? That don't have a lot of money, don't have a lot of finance, don't have a lot of resources. But in a sense, that's when you travel, you realize that for me, especially black countries, I mean, they're not eating three or four times a day, y'all. They not, they not doing it. They, they, and they don't like to eat a lot, that's weird. Like I'm telling y'all, it's not just Americans, I believe it's Europeans in some way, maybe you're not as bad as we are, but I think you probably are getting there if you're not there. Because we eat a lot, we eat a lot, and I'm gonna say diaspora. It's not just Americans. I'm talking about my my Londoners, my UK. Yeah, wow. Because like this weekend was like the weekend of why are we eating so much? Like I went to my place in Cape Coast. Both places just gave a, it was a lot of food, and I just felt like, well, I know they made it catering to Black Americans. So I don't know people around the world. Oh, they Black American. Okay, that's fine. They want to eat a lot of food. I don't have a problem with it. It's not. I can't eat a lot of food. That's not enough. But then I went to this restaurant today, this big restaurant called Tatale, 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 Tatale. Uh, Tatale, he's a, a chef from London, UK, but yo, he powerful. He, he yo, rah, rah, rah. He was, woo, we had a great conversation. The brother's dope. And the food was a little more gourmet ish, but it's still a take on the uh, vegan, uh, or the traditional Ibusi or. Uh, I didn't see Kuntum Ray, but they did have soap below. And they had no tiger nut milk, no, no, you You gotta have tiger nut to be legit to me. I don't know. You wanna call yourself a vegan restaurant in Ghana? I wanna recommend something. Have tiger nut. That stuff is live and charged for real, and everybody enjoys it. So below is nice too, but that tiger nut, that's when you take it to the extra level. So, uh, it was good. It was a little expensive. It was a little too expensive for me, but. <laughs> You know, that expensive is for two people, I'm paying $27. That is like too expensive, like in Ghana. You, you don't really want to do that. But the best thing you can do is learn how to make your own food. But anyway, food is very important. That's what we're talking about actually today. We, we, I'm tying in food to health and health to longevity. But it's the quality of the food and it's, the, and it's also the frequency of eating the food. So people in the countryside or in the village, they ain't eating five times. Okay, they like eating three times a day. And when they do, I mean, that's a real food. Like, I get the food, food, the Ken the the Banco. I get it. Like, I, oh, God, like, okay, it's substance. It's, yes, it makes sense. You got to work. You know what I'm saying? So you got to make sure you eat a something of substance. I mean, it, it's 
brilliant, actually, and it's what grows. It's the cassava flower, the plants and flower, and I, and I guess the fufu flower, and I forget the name of this. I think it's all-purpose flower. Uh, and like, okay, like, okay, I get it. Contumery, this high in everything vitamin, I mean, uh, green, you know. So, because I thought, because I said, yeah, I, I was talking to Kwame, I said, yeah, Kwame, you be eating healthy with me. He was like, and then he didn't say anything, but I said to myself, well, I asked myself, well, what would y'all call unhealthy? He couldn't name one thing. Because in actuality, the diet itself, I don't know if it's unhealthy. Like, take an oil away or two, this is pretty dang good. Like, I mean, it, it, don't, it ain't as bad as the stuff in the States. I mean, you can go there, I'm sure. I mean, they don't eat a lot. I think the foods that they grow is weird Africa, y'all, the motherland, the garden of Eden. So it's plentiful and it's strong and rich. And they're getting their vitamin and also remember they're getting a lot of it from the sun. So you're not eating as much because I think one of the things that you will definitely feel a difference in, nobody told me, nobody told me this one. And I got a nobody told me before I moved to down to this one. I'm going to say, if somebody can say it for someone else, let them know, but I'm going to tell you, you are going to lose a lot of weight here. It's an instant diet, like my brother Kwame in, in Central Region, Cape Coast, Elmina said. It's, you, I'm so skinny that I need two pillows under my butt just to feel like I got one, okay? That's what I'm saying, y'all, there ain't no cushion back there, okay? Now, you might not get that skinny, but I was small to start with. You're going to lose lots of weight. Now, some people gain weight. I only met one, but I don't. That don't mean it don't happen because we all had a conversation. All the Americans that I know, because if you say to the Ghanaians, if they say, "Oh, you lost weight," they won't say it. Usually, I say, "Oh, I lost weight." They'd be like, "Oh, why do you think?" Because they, they, they understand what happened. You came, you skinny out, you eating the same food, you eat more food. How, how? But you're going to lose a lot of weight because first of all, they, it's hot. And you're not, your body's not as used to it, but your body's good. Your body is sweating. How do you be pouring? I mean, especially in the beginning, but even at times, I mean, I get more, much more used to it. Pouring sweat, but they have their rags too, just like in the Caribbean, because they, you know, the man especially, so you be, be pouring sweat in the beginning. Okay, yeah, you're walking, you're, you're water weight, that's it. You're looking, okay, that's gone. And then you're drinking a lot of water, you're releasing toxins, you're eating foods that actually go and do what the food is designed to do, which is to nourish the bodies by giving it nutrients, right? Nutrients. So your body is like, yes, and you're like, hey, and then you're walking more, and then you walk more in the sun, and you're sweating. And you're walking more. It's not for the couch potato. And you, I guess you could set yourself up and be a couch potato in body. You could. You got enough, you got a decent amount, you know, money, go to your house, and nobody has to see it. But the country itself is not couch potato uh, oriented. <laughs> so you are going to lose weight. Somebody, if somebody is, maybe some people will tell you, you're going to gain weight. But my friends in the Gambia told me, I'm going to say, especially. Not as a vegan, because I would say, I came here, I was raw before I left. I came here, I ate, cooked food. I ate all the food. I mean, I was definitely not eating meat, but I was eating uh, everything. You know, I was eating what I wanted to eat. And I ate more technically a day than I did in the States. But I, I lost weight rapidly. I remember the dress I designed, I had to get it taken in. It was taken in a lot. And that was me eating all the time. Then what was the craziness? I did decide to fast, and I should have never did it. I should have never did that last one. Like I know, I learned now it was unnecessary. I probably did a clean off for one day. My bowels, I really be moving. The food is rich. So you can't. Somebody said to me. You, somebody told me and wrote me like, I heard you said you was gonna fast. I ain't doing no big fast, but it still was long enough. She was like, but you know what? In Africa, it's not, it's not, it's not needed, y'all. Not in that level. Not on that way. It's like the way we think, the way we, we, we take care of ourselves, the way we self care. All that that you used to do there, it, it's different here. You, it's not that you're not going to do that, which you're probably not. Those routines, not going to have the stuff to do, it. you're not going to have the products. But you're going to have something else that's better, probably. You're going to need different things and less things, like. Not gonna need much. Not to be honest. The sun, the sand, the, you know, it's beautiful. It's it's enough, and the food. So I feel like they're healthy. 
Like, I know that I see the pork, I know they do that, and maybe some goat and other stuff, but I don't see this a large amount of meat because I don't think most people got money to be sitting around eating all the damn meat like that, but I mean, they got things to do. Um, and I'll tell you the second thing I always say, so I say, you know, you know, follow spirit. Um, the other thing is, y'all think I'm playing with this nap situation, but this nap situation is brilliant. I, I, I will, I will, I will, I will give them that. I never saw nothing like it. They nap where they fall, wherever they work, wherever they, they go take a day nap. They be knocked, okay, out. Like sometimes you go, I was like, oh, you know what? I think maybe I want to go get some water. It was a little bar. That's like it's not. Let's really. get some water. Somebody said, oh, so the man's not there. Somebody said, oh, he's sleeping. This dude, this your stuff. Don't even matter. Don't even matter. Just take a nap. So, I mean, we underestimate. The people get hot too. They wiping themselves. They tired. I mean, you know, but the heat, you don't really want to fight it. And I think that I have to learn to do that. Like, actually, just lay down, you know, and just take a nap. Because the naps are very important. Yeah, they would never call it a nap. I don't know if they even know. I don't know. I'm sure they know the word nap. But the napping is important, you know. And uh, I, I would say overall, too, like a lot of people say, even when they're telling you, that is hard right now, which it is, you know, for a lot of people. I mean, they still have jokes or stories or some type of something. There's a positivity for sure on a lot of levels, you know. So it's, it's a difference. I like it, of course. I mean, I love it. I don't just like it. I love it. But it's amazing. And so, yeah, I want to say, if I'm inspiring you, I want to say thank you because I, I had to sit back when somebody told me about I was inspiring them and being inspiring. I was just like, you know what? This shit is kind of inspiring. Like, inspiring. Like, what? Like, what? I just came for two weeks. I stayed at an apartment and then I'm about to get some land, y'all. Like, I'm not going to talk about it too much until I sign on a dotted line. So we're just going to leave it right there. Like, I'm about to get some land. And and so I want to say, like, for me, when the land actually started the whole thing, I was like, remember that? Remember that dream that it was when I moved to North Carolina? Because I was going, me and this man got married. We bought this 18.5 acres of land in North Carolina. This is true. We were living in California. We moved to one of the other land. We're going to build this house. Do y'all know how much I created that version of what that life was going to look like? I would chant every morning the same chant in the same way. And see in nine steps exactly how I got the house, signed the papers first to the house, first moved in, what we built on the land. I got, oh yeah, all on plans and still, and I did it every day, every night, because I wanted it. And sometimes you, you, the dream is still there for you, but you it didn't work out, so you think it's never to return again, or that very, and it comes, but it comes in a better way. You were not preparing for nothing. You were definitely prepared for something. So to me, when I walked on the land, potential land that I'm thinking about, you know, getting, uh, I was just like, the feeling was like that feeling of when I first, you know, and say we at this, I saw it, actually I saw it, what I first saw the land uh, in North Carolina and it was like, oh my God. And that land was a great land. Had we not been married, you know, I just owned that land. Um, Ooh, I would have held on and sold it right about now. <laughs> okay, no, right before now, right before now, uh, because wow, that land was worth so much now. But we knew that, and we knew that. So this will be that same situation, and um, I'm just excited. I'm just very excited. So, but that's then there is spirit. Spirit will never fail you. Spirit will never fail you when you know. Most of us can say no instead of yes. I would like us all to say yes. I would like to say, y'all, you ever had that time when you just knew you was being pulled? You wasn't even worried. There was no stress. There was no time to worry. The Creator was just providing for you in such a way that you didn't even worry. You just lived, right? And most of us will say, not really. Like, I've had glimpses, you know, feelings, but like, did I actually, like, on a continuum? No, I don't really, not, not really. And the thing is, like, I feel like, but you can, and that's the way it's supposed to be. But you have to, this thing, you have to take the first step. Like, you really, really do. Like, you really do. You really have to. And then the second one, too. And then the third step. And then the fourth step. And then the fifth step. 
And then said, like, this is the thing. This, you just don't have to take the first step. The first step would be, I got the vision. That was your first step. If you don't take the second and third and fourth, it's not really a journey. It's just you standing in one place trying to make some stuff happen. And that's why it don't happen, because you got to move around a little bit. And um, I'm telling you, that's all that's in any you want that you don't have, or you, yeah, yet you don't have, that you feel you don't have. You have to, you're not following directives. Believe me, there's no way you lived any life and you didn't get some messages about something. And more than one time. So then you, like that's it, get the message. I was not this clear. I needed a lot to be clear in the States. Like, I realize now, like, I was doing a lot. I, I look then, I'd be laughing too, because some of them videos, you know, like Facebook, Facebook would be like, we care about your memories, bah, whatever. But I kind of like it because then it says, this is three years, four years, like one year. Like, I still was in here. My face was like extra clean and glowing, but like, all I, I needed, I was doing 500,000 things. Like, it was so serious to stay healthy. So it was like, we knew we were battling, but we didn't really understand it. And here, it's not that hard. It's not necessary. It's not what really is the beauty that you see. The beauty that you want, that natural glow, is not the new makeup that got on the line that makes you glow so you can fake a tan or you can fake the glow. Like, you won't get it here. You don't sweat and it's hot and it's, I don't know, like the simplicity of things and what real beauty is. Like, these women and, and these men, I mean, they don't have all this stuff on. I mean, not even on their heads or on their bodies. They are all beautiful and they dress well. The women wear the most pretty dresses and the girls do too. But they are not. And that, it makes you look at your own self differently. It makes you look at your own beauty differently. You can't, don't leave the world and not know how beautiful you really are. And the way for a black person to know that is to go to Africa. Go find a country and pick one. Do not leave the world with all the hangups of being in a Eurocentric society. I mean, truly, I know, you know, these countries have been colonized as well, but it's, you know, it's like on one end, their tribalism is some people will argue is not healthy. And on another end, you can argue that it's quite healthy. And no matter how much, yeah, they, yeah, they've been turned around. They, the language to me trumps all the colonizing when they're able to maintain a language because that's real for them. And their African name is what they're tracing back to say if somebody's related to them. You know, I mean, I, I think to have such customs could be, you know, liberating and probably torturous for some people. I mean, it just depends on how you look at it. But I'm saying I, I would like to highlight that beauty. That even the idea that the chiefs are, it's what was this, okay, yeah, you got the president, but he ain't running nothing over here. You know what I'm saying? And the chief's like, yo, yo, like, I mean, that's a, those are the kings and queens that we as black Americans, we as blacks and diaspora heard about. They really have a system. That system is deep. So knowing how to greet the chief, making sure you don't disrespect him by doing something you don't even know you did. Carl was saying, was his one of his cousins and my brothers at the priest. He said, he don't really like going to see him. They don't care you the family. You mess up. You didn't say the words you're supposed to say in the way you were supposed to say it. You get punished for that ish. I mean, that's a, a, a level of respect that I don't know if we understand. There's no frustration. This is what it is. And that's hard because we're like, I do what I want. I say what I want. Like, you know, I'm going to say it again. Like, I mean, you know, forgive me. I know my answers with me because I've been saying some stuff. Uh, I, the chief, the God chief, the sister, like, she told me to, to learn the name Fool. And I'm excited. I love the name Fool. Like, I, I, I had my American style food and I got sick. That my that I didn't I didn't feel well so for one just a little day. Like I didn't feel good. My stomach I, don't, I was constipated. Like it was I couldn't I never really did this five things in a meal breakfast. I mean I did at one point I remember yeah, I was vegan and it was sausages and vegan sausages, pancakes, ash browns, biscuit, toast, jelly, and juice. So and I used to go home sick and like, cause I mean, that's just, but my food with Ghanaian food, my body would be like, yes. Like I, I adapted to Ghanaian food very easily. The, and the best part is as vegans, there are so many, I, I, I faux, faux it for, 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 for 
in the car area, and that's what I found. I don't know how many more. I found the fourth one today. The fourth one is a uh, higher end. You know, it's nice. I mean, it's a lot. It's a lot. Of, it's good. It's good. I, 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 I'm so proud of the brother, and the brother is down for the cause. Us that have lived with uh, the others for uh, our lives, most of us for any length of time, we militant. We got some military UK brothers and sisters. I just want to shout you. I just want to tell you I love you for the, the brother was what? The, 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 he was calling what it was. I was like, yes, brother, yes, come in. Yeah. So anyway, it was nice. The other Ghanaians that the Ghanaians that go outside, y'all is the bomb. Like the Ghanaians that actually live out. I want to shout out the Ghanaians that live abroad. Because you'll get a bad rap, they, they don't treat you right when you come home. <laughs> they don't really see you as the Ghanaian you used to be. It's true, tell the truth, shame the devil. And, you know, your, your tree might probably be a little rusty, you got a little accent now. I, I know, I know, I know it's hard. I know it's hard, they give you a little hard time. But And the best part is you gotta get money when you come back because you played it big. You told them you was rolling, but you really struggling. But that's another story. And I don't know that your business. That's just what I heard. Anyway, and yeah, so, I mean, the Ghanaian is a different person that grew up 40 years in the UK. I mean, yeah, you got name, but you're from the UK right now. You know, like Ghanaian with Canada. Uh, yeah, you got more than I got, for sure. But you still, they still see you as Canadian. So, what I'm saying is, it's okay, diaspora, is that even Ghanaian is you still to some Ghanaians, American, Canadian, French, whatever it is, right? Because you are special. See, let me tell you, I, I, I get the now to say Kofa Bird, like now it makes sense to me. So you go back and you fetch what was lost, right? And that's what we did. We're going back to Africa, diasporans from all over the globe. But, and we got to bring it back, what is lost, and bring it back anew. Anew. So we have to bring it back anew, right? So it's like, okay, this is the new. You're the new. The Canadian Ghanaian, who is Ghanaian technically, but you know, you're going you're gonna to get a little, yeah, uh, yeah. You know, you get a little, they kind of mess with you a bit, right? So you, you know, we know what it's like to live in the house with the master. Like, we know. My, my UK, my European, black, my French, black. Yo, we know. So when we come back, we'd be a little angry. We'd be like, wake up, Ghanaians. <laughs> Don't trust the mother effers, you know. Woo, we'd be, woo, like all the guy. Yo, the Ghanaian brother I met from New York, that is Ghanaian here, he was like, yo, he was like, yo, we brought it to, they, they, yo, y'all. But my my Kwame be Kwame be wearing his Kwame be wearing his African clothes now. What? Okay, he heard, you know. And then the other brother, uh, and then he met Kwame, who Kwame, because you know we Black Americans, we go in, we go hard with the Africa. Like if we into the Africa ish, we into it. Okay, we in it. Like I just want to congratulate, and I just want to. I'm thinking I'm gonna say this for a lot of videos. I just want to thank all of our brothers and sisters that prepared for Africa, not in the way that most people would think. You prepare by learning the customs, as even though it's a big continent, a lot of ethnicities, there are some common things that are very African that I find. There's a lot of Africans here from different places, but they do a lot of the same things. Okay, I'm just saying, it's an African thing, and we, the babies at home, to the point that, to the point that when we, when we say, oh, yeah, I have my baby at home, y'all no, no, no painkillers. I had a midwife. They looking at you crazy because they look like, the girl, please. You know what I'm saying? Like, no, I'm going to doctor. You know, the Ghanaian today, the London Ghanaian, he told me, he said, he said, don't worry, you're doing good with the tree. Because Kwame told me today, Kwame told me today, look, I'm about to be embarrassed to be your teacher. He was asking you your name, and I just taught you that yesterday. I was like, he's like, I was like, oh, I got to do my studying. So anyway, I really do. I got to take time to study. But the brother, the Ghanaian was like, no, you know, um, he said, no, you know, you're, you're, no, you're doing good. Like, I'm so right. He said, soon, he said, it's getting like that. He said, they're focused on teaching their children English. 
And I remember one of the family members saying, I don't, we don't have to worry about teaching them tree or if they lose tree or not. I mean, they'll hear it and somebody will speak it. It's about that English. He said, you're going to learn the language so well, you're going to come back and teach their children. So it's on both sides, you know. So I think that us coming home is important because it's the it's the same culture for real. It's, it's the Adinkra symbol. We are the Anu. We was that egg. We are that egg. That the, that the bird, that the Sankofa bird is actually holding in its hand. And it has to be the combination of all. Now, I'm not going to say both, both is, that's very Eurocentric terms. All, the, you know, the combining of all it has to be, it just has to be. So it's just, it's like my mind is way open here. So, I, yeah, I mean, life is really, I'm living. And then to, to realize that. You, you, like I could say, I, I seen how I got here. Like I, I seen progression. I remember them videos that live in the yellow and the, the wall behind me and the whoo -hoo, and the fro was all big and I was just like letting it all out and I was trying weaves and I was going for it. I was like, yep, I got a feeling. Yep, I have a mission. Yep, I want to go there. Yep. I, that's what I say like that is what you got. Just follow spirit. It sounds crazy. I was looking crazy probably last year, 2019. I ain't kidding. You couldn't tell me nothing. I'm so glad I took care of myself long enough until the 50s came. I was able to be like, I'm out. Peace. I'm going to grow. I'm out of here. You know, like it's, 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 um, you know, so the AZ, don't do that to yourself. Don't even stop and think. And other people feel a way. That's okay. Cause you live in your life. Like, you're not old and you're not dead so let's live let's live i think i say follow spirit because the whole thing is wild you think i knew that i was leaving my where i lived to, to i if, if i had family there i put on never return not just because it don't i don't i'm i'm content so i would say never return but you know uh, I still don't want to return. I want them to come see me. I don't know, y'all. I mean, I don't. Why do I don't want to find? It would give me anxiety. I could tell. It probably wouldn't be good for me. And, uh, but the universe knew. But we did that. That was those classes and maintaining a high vibrational frequency. I'm not saying probably was like, if this be talking about the high vibe again. But I remember the time I was flying, and even the time I had the little romance, even though romance, but no, no, you know, I ain't doing nothing. I ain't doing nothing now. I was just saying, happening. Yeah, but, having the romance that like that was an ele uh, elevation like love vibration like that was important that was the last almost like seemed like the last thing that i needed and once that did what it did dissipate like it was supposed to i mean it was perfect it was like shh. it was like you got it let's go you, you did it you did it you know and we all do it. Those were those classes. If anybody, y'all need to go back. Some of the classes there, and I don't know, are so inexpensive. Go look up master classes. Just look up master classes on my website. It'll be in the description box. And go back and take some of those courses. I mean, if you want to see the trajectory, take anything that says vibration, high vibe, anything with the vibration frequency. I was about that vibration frequency life. But also the law of attraction, which I never listen to really anymore because I'm just living it. You know, I don't, I don't need to, con I mean, I'm con it's in my head. I got it. I'm living it. I'm living it. I understand. I understand. I'm living it. I don't have time to not live. I don't, I don't, there's no time. There's just no time to get negative. There's nothing that you sleep well because it's hot and you got friends and family and you got new ideas with new people and you live in life. Like I, my worries factor is not really there. And if it's not there, then you're kind of clear. And when you're clear, you create. So you create good things. Don't give up. Know that you just follow spirit. Follow spirit. But I think these little, I've been getting these little bites on my feet. Let me tell you about the immune system. I know the immune system is powerful. I know that the immune system is powerful because I know being in, in Africa and Ghana, that I have been exposed to some new stuff that my body has never ever seen, okay? Never ever seen, heard of, or felt. Now, I do was thinking to myself that I wonder if that year of travel got my body more acclimated to this kind of climate, so I kind of think so. That's why I say just go with spirit. I kind of think 
that it did. But uh, I know still my body is like different bugs, different things, different things bite you all the time. I just wanted to remind you in the video that there is nothing like your immune system. Like you should know, you, many of you are world travelers, many of you travel around the world. Your immune system has had, has had dramatic, quick changes. And you're here because the joy of what you're doing, because the happiness, because the love. So, it, I mean, I don't see how the universe creates anything, whether they're created or not. And you don't, yeah, your immune system is amazing. I'm just saying, I'm not saying nothing else. I'm telling you, love your immune system. Give thanks for your immune system. It's like your intuition is the same. It's protecting you. Spirit. It's, your immune system is God or goddess. Your immune system is spirit. Your immune system protects you. Y'all believe in God's protection, but people don't believe in the immune system protection. I mean, you gotta be in you in another country. You think you ain't get bit by something you didn't get bit before. I'm sure I'm getting bit by some new stuff. And I just thought to myself, wow, you know what? But uh, yeah, so love your immune system because like your immune system is like, if you keep thinking it's gonna be under attack, you're lessening what it could do, the, the power of what it could do. It's mighty. It needs something to do. It needs some something to do. You making it happen. It's like, yes, all right, yes. And then you get these foods in you in the right way. Like I said, you can have all the traditional favorites of Ghana and you can do it in a vegan style. And so what? There's a vegan, somebody told me about a Facebook group, vegan something. I, I joined it, they approved me. I'm about to go on there and find out what's, what they're doing. You know, they find a place to get organic like grains, and I saw a little bit of it. So I'm about to be cooking. I ain't gonna be buying. It's just the first month or two, you know, you go to restaurants. And plus, I want y'all to know how many and what I said, my, my thoughts and everything. So this way, if you come, you know, you're like, hey, sis, what's up? So a lot of stuff that I, can, I do, and that's everything in life for you too. It has a purpose. You're going to these places because eventually you're gonna help other people. It's a part of your resource list, okay? Give people the 411 and all of that. Saves a lot of people a lot of money. Be like, no, that's kind of expensive unless you like that. Maybe it's not worth the price and you can kind of tell people more of that. So I'm uh, doing my work. Like, I'm doing my work, but it don't, it's just great, y'all. And I got my family coming tomorrow and I got a dope male energy in my life that clicks. I mean, what? And it ain't not, we, we friends. I mean, you know, that's what it is right now, so. So yeah, I'm, I'm even, I'm even, I'm even, so. All right, thank you y'all, I've been hot up in here. So what I did, so I found out that you can dry some oranges, the orange peels, and then burn that, and that keeps the, the uh, mosquitoes away. Kwame told me that. So I'm about to do that, because right now I'm doing a spray, and I got a quiet, like this stuff is, the toxic stuff. I know I'm gonna do the citronella. I'm about to go get real serious about not having to use the spray. But once you use it, you gotta lock the doors and I gotta come out here. But lucky for y'all. All right, all right. Black Minds in Meditation. Hey, beautiful. Hey, sis. Choice Buckley, good evening. Yes to the dress. Oh, thank you. This is a who, what wear from Target. And I sleep in, I, this is my pajamas and my lounge wear. Uh, thank you. Here looks nice. Look like your crown is getting th it's getting thicker and healthier. I felt it in every way. So like I said, I'm gonna keep with my little system of braiding gently and as much as I can. Hey Sheila, how are you? Thank you, Tumi Dasi. Actually, clever. Your viewers are about to get their life with your style and decor empire. Okay, yes, I'm, girl. What? Oh my God! I know, I love you, Midasi. The toy says, "Greetings, beautiful East Maria, queens and kings." Yes, thank you. Greetings to you. Greetings, ladies. Hey, girl. Hey, beautiful. Hey, Virginia. Looking forward to it all. Well, the home decor be included in the book. Yes, oh, absolutely, absolutely. You look good. Remember that rug you had with the sister with free form locks? That's your style right now. Oh, 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 yes, oh, yeah. I know, oh, yeah. Girl, you are right. I know, I know. I would do it. I would lock up in a minute in Ghana. I mean, if I had the patience and didn't need a tremendous amount of variety, because that's exactly what's happening. Y'all are so deep, 
I know I need variety, so let's not go there. But I mean, I love it. I could, but I won't. I know me. But what I what I wanted to say is, you know, hair braiding here is so dang affordable that yes, you don't need to wear the high style more than two weeks. First of all, it's bad for your hair. Pulls out the you know edges. Mine is definitely growing back. Um, you could just get it every two. You can get it if you just. That if you're okay with letting your hair be in a protective style for half the month, you can do that. You can even do that. It's twenty dollars to get a good hairstyle. You paid about twenty U.S. dollars with the braids, the hair, everything. So it's a lot. A lot of things. I think our hair breakers had a lot, and I can say had a lot to do with. We paid hundreds of dollars to get our hair braided in the states, and they braid just as tight. Let's face it, in the states. So you was holding on to that damn hairstyle. Now think about it, you broke that, that $300 is 20 And now you can get your hair done. You can get your hair done every damn week if you wanted to. One thing I know the ladies here, they, they change their styles kind of way a lot because they can. Every braiding places, hair places, and hair places are braiding places. If they got the hair salon, I don't know where they are. They, I'm sure they do. But I don't, that's not, braiding is the part, it's beauty parlors. You can get your hair braided at the market. You can get your hair braided. You can get your, I'll walk out. I think I'll be playing when I, I can walk out right now. It's a little late, but somebody will get somebody to braid my hair. Braiding is, is, is the braiders heaven. Isn't it funny that I came to Africa and I love African braids? Like I, I, I'm, I'm just, I just found somebody who's gentler. So we're going to work it and I'm going to, you know, to keep it out for, to it. So I'm just saying, like, this is another thing that I'm loving about Ghana right now. Yeah, so yes. So, darling, I want to say yes, absolutely. That's when I think of the petite, the home decor, and that other, it's all one to me. But the home decor is big. The home decor might overtake everything. Like, I mean, like that. Oh, my gosh, y'all. My furniture would be, I mean, y'all be buying my furniture and my place best. My, like, all the stuff we did all these years together, now I'm doing it. And Kwame, yo, Kwame, that Kwame, yo, Kwame, Kwame, born on Saturday. That's the day God was born. That's what the Ashanti says. So I'm just saying, like, God said, sharp, smart. He the man. He got it for you. He can get it. You know the people that know he the man, too. Like, it's like, what? Like, I'm, I don't even know how to explain it. Like, I don't even. I explained it. I just know that. But this is the thing. I didn't come here thinking I was going to be into fashion designing and, you know, home decor stuff. Y'all know that. Like, it wasn't like I, that was the universe saying, plop. Oh, oh, so you mean, and, and when your mind is right, when you when you lift it because, you know, you let go of a lot of stuff, are you meaning to tell me that everything is going to kind of just be there because there's no resistance to it? That as we've been learning all this time, uh, your wish is my command. Ask and you shall receive now. As a man thinking, so it is now. Are you telling me that we was we're hearing about it, studying about it, reading about it, practicing about it? But nobody was really feeling it. We was like, but why am I not? Why I gotta hold the happy vibe, you know? And then you, it's all kind of half of that's gone. I feel like 90%, and that's how you feel. And then you're like, oh, now I can really fly. Everything was there. How I meet Kwame. And there was resistance to another sister that wasn't trying to let me meet Kwame. She did, but she was trying to. And everybody was like, nope, dear, this your boy. It's your boy right here. So Kwame is very a good person, good people, very smart. Kwame is the kind of smart that I love. He street smart. I am I, I got no street smarts too. And I don't got as much as most, but I got some. And uh I love that kind of smart. Like I love that kind of and he can read people because of all the people he dealt deals with and people around the world. So he can read people and he's got it and he's mature. That's somebody Kwesi told me told me a lot about Kwame. He's like, you know. He's very mature. He's a he's a brilliant. There are some brilliant people out here. There are some brilliant you you gotta get out in the streets, y'all, because you're gonna miss all brilliant people in the streets. So it's a lot of brilliant people out here. It's wonderful. And the other part, one more bragging and then I go back. 
The other thing I was thinking about today is what I love about living in Ghana and what I love about Africa is that when you sit with the men or the women, you just feel safe. Like I feel safe. I feel like I, I don't I think after being away from my New York family for so long, especially with my aunts and uncles. And when I come to their house, I mean, yeah, it's family, but it's still a little awkward. I don't know how to act or where to sit or if my feet should be here. It never felt comfortable. It still felt like I was visiting people I kind of didn't know. I know that sounds odd to some, maybe not, but I moved away so for a long time. But when I come to Africa, I feel like I I could sit there forever. It felt, it's the comfort. And they're talking, speaking their language, but I love when they speak their language. I actually feel more happy and secure. I mean, I feel good anyway. I feel well. I feel like I almost know what they're saying without listen. Like I always say, the, the language is very soothing, but I feel safer. When I walk and some a group of African men, I don't feel like, ooh, across the street or across the road or whatever. <laughs> like, I don't feel like that. I feel like, wow, I feel safe and protected. Like, hey, as you said, like, hey, like what? Like, I've never felt this in my life. So that's a big difference. I feel very protected. The men, the women, don't really matter. The women, the men, the kids are, you just become part of a family. You you don't feel like you have a family vibe or family pe people. You become part of a family. And it's it's the most, so when I go to our center, I think mostly I'm by the most part by the men. I don't even realize, like, oh, I'm the only woman. No, it's just that other women, they, everybody taking naps. Take a nap, son, in the naps, y'all. What the, Maybe they got a name for that. I'm going to ask them, do y'all got a name for that time that y'all do that? Because that's, other people not know, but it's so, it's so beautiful. It's beautiful. I'm going to take a nap. I'm going to learn to take a goddamn nap when I'm tired. That's the only thing I got to do. Oh, yes. Thanks, ladies, for a great class today. I'm like, Sheila, was that class on point? Hey, Zakia, baby girl, how are you, darling? I hope you're well. Uh, MSP spirit in your title. Oh, thank you, darling. I see it now. I said, follow Sprit, huh? Sprite. Okay, that too. The fairy. And we had an E on it. <laughs> the fairy kingdom. Okay, anyway. that's not a story. Okay, so, yes, actually, yeah. <laughs> I will. Me, I see. Emma B says, hey, Lisa, hey. Uh, Shauna says, love to hear. Oh, thank you. This is my, I took out my braids and they ain't done a thing with it. Look, but I thank you. Marilyn says, hey, Lisa, enjoy your new life. Yes, thank you. I, I am, and I'm, I'm so happy you are. Black Mind says, yes, this is very inspiring. Oh, me, Dicey. Manifestations, yes, y'all. We're about to get this land here. I got some things I got to do to sit down, work this out. Then the line is peace, beloved, peace to you. This is good for my heart, sis. It's like you found your way home. Yes, then the line is absolutely live your life, queen. Thank you, darling. Coco, hey, girl, hey to you. Hey, Marissa, darling, how are you, sweetie? Samora, hey, sister, greetings and blessings. So good to see you, you as well. Blessings. Uh, searching observer, blessings to you, you too as well. Is he an Aquarius? No, he's a Pi. I'm sorry, Pisces. My other, my other daughter, father. But I will say this: No, he is a Sag, like my daughter. They're born not too far away from each other. But y'all, life is so. The life is the great mystery, never what it seems to be. Right? Why do I always attract? Rasta man, even if they don't look at they they Rasta and be. Yeah. I think because they're the non-conformists, I think that's what it is. But I mean, I laugh because he loves reggae and people still call him George the Rasta. It was Rasta, like, but he used to have locks and he don't have to have them more because you know, he had a situation. So he decided to let that go. But anyway, and you know, he's not Rasta, but he still kind of is. And he thinks like Rasta, he talks like Rasta. He's Rasta, but he's, and I, I just laugh, but because like, that's what I track, like, I don't know why, but anyway. He's not roster like that. He's not out now. But, but let me tell you another thing. This is another thing we go through. So wait. This is look at how everything is connected and everything that you are with is connected as well. And I'm just I wanted to bring this part in because I saw this today and it was beautiful. So Kwame, thing called Kwame, is very uh, I, I want to say very African, very Ghanaian. This is a little criticism my Ghanaians and other Africans that we as Black Americans have just about y'all a little bit. Just listen, okay. Just don't get all upset. 
We think you are very too nice to those others and you're just too compliant and you just like love one love and we're just not really down with the one love because we've seen that sh shit already and we don't really like it. So when y'all do that shit, it angers us. So when we see y'all not doing that, that makes us feel good because then you realize you. But the ones that notice that they ain't really no good and don't trust them fully, is the ones that didn't live that live with them for a very long time. People in the UK, other parts of Europe, in America, that we I know how they operate. So you don't really know and we just get so so Kwame is a dynamic. He is one love in his own way and nice and they don't talk about nobody else. You know, it's just that it's one love. Okay, I told him about that damn song. Anyway. But he been around us, like black Americans and people, and the Ghanaian, and which is his client, and this man who's a London guy, and people are really these Ghanaians came home like they they got the woke up like you talk about the wake up call, you talk about the black slapped out. I mean, like they got it. They was like, oh, you mean when you go to the states, black is black is black. Yeah, we try to tell y'all this before your Cambridge was listening. <laughs> You mean to tell us that they don't see my name, last name is Ofori, and yours is Jackson? No, darling! They did not hear my accent. No, they didn't hear your damn accent. They wasn't looking for your accent. They saw your blackness. So, they don't know until you go, you live with them, and then you realize that they I certainly ain't that damn colder. And actually, the shit is too cold, okay? And you don't even deal with ice because you're African. Y'all don't. Y'all can eat, drink some. Lukewarm more than being way more happier than we think. That's okay. That's our whiteness. We're sorry. Okay. So there you go. It's a mixed up world we're living in. It's a mixed up world we're living in. But yeah, so Kwame is peace of love and, you know, one love in a kind of situation, right? Because they always talk about something like, oh, this is my friend, this guy, this is my friend, this guy. Like, oh, this is white. When you say Switzerland, I'll be like, here we go. Let me look at this damn picture. Damn. It happens. They be like, oh, this is my friend, so and so, the name, Kwame, Kofi, Kwesi, or one of them. Oh, he's married. He's in Spain. You'd be like, let me look at this damn picture. God damn, he puts the damn thing. They'd be like, you know what, y'all, all of y'all, you know, and then it's just, it's, yeah, it goes down from there. Because, let me just tell you why. And people love who they love, choose you, choose whatever. But it's like, come on, dude, like, come on, really? Like, what's going on here? So when he got my reaction, he probably figured out that I, I, not that I wasn't not against it. I just was like, come on, nobody came in here to see this shit. Like, I don't want to see this. Like, I, I need to see what I'm seeing. <laughs> That's why we were in Europe with the women. This, just, this is okay. Just be over there. We're good. I don't have a problem with it. Just, I need to see what I see, you know. So he's around all these black folks, his own Ghanaians that went abroad that is basically like hipping him to the hip talk. You know what I'm saying? hipping him to what's really and who they are as Africans. Like, this is beautiful, y'all. So this going out in the world, even though when we come back to our places that we felt like I'm a Ghanaian like anybody else, right? But no, no. And you Ghanaians are not even Ghanaians if you're not really been here for a while. So you are home and your experience out there was very necessary because you were supposed to bring it back. Everybody suffered when our collective ancestors were stolen off the shores or stolen and then traded. Do you understand? They both sides suffered. I mean, what links the, the Ghanaian to the African in the diaspora is nothing but, is, is actually the same ancestor. We both lost the same ancestor. We both are connected to the same ancestor. We both have been broken away from the same ancestor. And, and when you allow it, the bond between the Ghanaian and the, and the Black diaspora is very powerful because it's like the two, the, if, okay, I'm, I'm going to say two halves, let's just get your, you know, your subject, come and need, need each other like the sand call for bird to complete the journey and to continue the journey as well. We all Africans confused, hurt, sad, disillusioned. But we have, there's something changing, and I feel it. I think that's why I like both. I like to, when I go see my Americans, I need that go, yo, yo. Let me, let me, let me tell you what's going on. But I also, I need to have my Ghanaians. Like, I, I, I'm part, I'm your Ghanaian too. 
And in a while, if, if it hits you like that, you gonna really be it. And you're not gonna be playing. You don't know the language and you don't know the customs as much as you can and you're gonna really understand it. You're gonna love it. You're gonna love it. So it's a connection for sure. And it's that same ancestor. Like I said, I feel like culturally, if I looked at it on the surface, being with the whole Ofori family, whether it's Kwame or Kojo and his family, you would think that there's a difference because there, I guess, maybe on the surface, it looks like there would be a difference. But in the end, this is the metaphysical part for me or the spiritual part, the creator will bring you your people. It don't matter what shape, size, or color. To be honest, Creed, it's going to be your people and it's going to be somebody that you all connect and you are from just different backgrounds. Your soul really is eternal and it finds itself and it will continue to find itself. So, yeah, I wouldn't have a lot of people like, all oh, the customs, all the, I don't know, like maybe it's me. I mean, I don't, I, it doesn't bother me. Maybe I, I'm at a certain age where it's not that the men don't help the women do the laundry. The men are not supposed to sit outside and let everybody see them doing the land laundry. Okay, cool, but I'll help, I'll do the laundry, I'll just do it inside. That don't bother me. That's not a fight to me. That's a balance because they have things that women don't do here either that she don't want to do. She do enough. I, I, I think that we have to even look at relationships, black male, female relationships, not from the eyes or the lenses of the, of the Eurocentricity. That even our greatest scholars are still, in a sense, fighting through Eurocentric eyes, I believe. And we have to ask ourselves, I mean, if that's okay if that was your eyes, but them ain't your eyes. You don't have to put on your African eyes, your something deeper eyes, from seeing the balance and the, and the beauty. Well, of course there's imbalances. Of course, you know, there's this wonderful commercials in Ghana that says, and it's showing a little girl, and somebody's saying, you can't do that, you're a girl. You can't do that, you're a girl. And there's these commercials empowering the girls to say, you can be more than a wife and a homemaker. You know, it's a twofold, right? Of course you should. You can go to scientists, you can do whatever. I mean, I'm all about that life. But at the same time, there's some beauty in the housekeeper too. I've seen it. And you lose some skills, you know? So it's a, it's a, I think just let everything be in this natural, progressive way. You don't have to force either way. But it's still for girls to know it feels good. It feels good. I don't, I, I'm not saying the men don't disrespect the women. I just don't see it. I, I feel if I'm going to say, if I'm going to say that in a room, if I, there's a bunch of Ghanaian men and a bunch of Ghanaian women, the women have the authority. I mean, the women feel like the strongest in the room. The men know that. They kind of get quiet around the women, I find. They don't interrupt like that. Like this, like almost like what Janae described as sometimes Southern men. See the connection? I don't, I don't see. I don't feel small. I don't think nobody. I mean, I've sat around. So the women is, yeah, like they got a presence and it ain't this little, you know. I mean, I saw more of that in the conscious communities in the States where it was this, now that's what the bad version of Africa, you know, was this step behind me, woman, thou, I am bad, you know. It was some made up ish, but like on the real, real, I think everybody respecting the woman. They just like us when they, you got a mother and father house, you got a mother and a father in the house, they'll still say, I'm gonna tell your mother, if they mother come up to me, I'm gonna talk to their mother. I mean, the same thing I remember growing up too, like you had a father, but I'm gonna talk, call your mother. It's still that sameness. So I, I don't, I mean, I'm sure there's things going on, but I, I don't, I see couples, I see, it just seems very balanced. There's problems everywhere. This is my perception, I'm just letting y'all know. Oh, that's so funny you said that. I guess I answered that. And that, clever, yes, is a sad thing. Oh, you, okay, good, clever, naturally. Thank you, sad rule system. My good, good girlfriend is a Leo. There you go. There you go. Coco, how is it making female friends go? Do they hang like a, uh, uh, the women, uh, you know, when I see people, everybody's so busy. But, um, yes. I, I never saw women here because I'm not. I, I might not be in the right place. And I, I need to get out. I do, you know, when I go. But all the women here have to work on some level. Like the girls work. Like everybody is working. But when I see the women kicking it, 
like the market women, they kicking it. Even the women that's working there still, they working the stops, they working the bus stops. So you mean like the everyday woman that goes to work? I ain't got into that that field, but so I don't know what they do. I see the regular everyday other people that got in the trochos that are still going places and doing things. So when I see women together, they're working together or helping each other out or it's they're doing something. I don't, I don't, I, I'm sure it's two girlfriends walking, and I'm sure I see little girls, but even the little girls, I remember in the shots, I'm like, they're fetching the water, they're caring for the children. The little girls can hold that baby on their back just as good as their mama can. They train to hold the, the stuff on their head, like, I mean, it's a whole nother even, like, oh, you know what I'm saying? Like, you got to even take it and look at it in a different way, but of course there are communities that mimic more maybe eurocentric culture so it's a different thing women have many can name women here i'm sure have nine to fives get their hair done and their nails after work go have a drink i i know that exists i don't run into that i'm not in that area of a crowd don't go down there to you know have that experience but i do see the everyday people and the everyday people it's, it's a different they together we buy their work their work brings them together so but is it easy to make Ghanaian girlfriends? Uh, the my Ghanaian girlfriends are actually uh, I, I hmm, I'm gonna think about that because I was thinking about I was gonna say I feel like the family that I'm staying I stay with I feel like Faustina could be my girl like I'm I'm thinking I'm about to have her dye my hair. Do you understand what I'm saying? Like I'm thinking about getting Faustina to touch up my roots. You know I'm I'm very serious like. That's my girl. That's we, we, you know what I'm saying? I ain't call on the phone. Well, but that's there's a love, there's a level there, do you know? And I was thinking about uh, the sister, Joyce and Diana, how much I enjoy being with them. When I do be with them, I'm just not with them all the time. You know, I'm uh, so I think it's the same anyway. I think you probably it's probably just as easy, or or if it's a level of difficulty where you are, then it might be the same thing. But I do think that. When you come to Africa, don't look for what you think it should look like and this and that. Allow it to come to you. Because sometimes the women come a lot through the men. Because now you meet their sister and they this and they that. Somebody, I mean, let somebody kind of bring you in. So once you're brought in, you're good. And I remember as a black American, you can connect with other black Americans and they have quite a few. I sat at the table and we all from YouTube got in, got in touch with each other from YouTube or on some level met through YouTube or met and both are all on YouTube. So look for African Americans, you'll find way that'll be a much easier relationship to at least start so you ain't, you know, just not having a lot of male energy or talking to yourself, you know. Definitely I would say uh, join the African Americans thing, I think the African American Association. I would enjoy it. There's African Americans that you can link up with all the time, you know, different people, different, you know, things in common. Like I would definitely uh, look for that if that's important to you. Me now, I used to think, "Mom, y'all want to, y'all think I learned my lesson." And I was like, "Oh, I want girlfriends. I met my girlfriends. I met my girlfriends." And the woman came, and you know what? She really was a girlfriend. She was just with totally people, so I ain't mad. But what I realized is, good friends, whatever way, however they come, good people, good people around me, good people around me. Let the universe do the rest. If the universe ain't needs you for me right now, I feel content. I don't know what and what it is. I feel like I'm getting enough. So I think the energy that I need right now is exactly what I got. I, I need people that's going to get it done. Maybe having a girl with me to distract it. I don't even know. But I mean, I'm good. Like, I'm real good. Like, my girlfriend right now is my business, the things I want to do, my dreams. And your dreams will lead you to all the right people anyway. So you, you'll meet that just when it's the time. And But... You know, always look at what's in front of you and, and say thank you and keep it moving. You'll get more or you'll get something different. It always changes, doesn't it? Yes. Yes. A good question still. Thank you. What do they do for fun? Uh, for fun. They go out. They got, I mean, for the drink, they go out. They have clubs and they go dancing. And they, they do all of that. I want to say, I think they got movie theaters too, but they, uh, they go out, I'm sure, like I said, now again, I would like somebody else, maybe there's, there's a sister named um, Ashanti Queen. I know she did a video, I, I'm sorry, I didn't get a chance to watch the videos, but I know she did like a 
go to the mall, a cry mall with her family. Check her out, yo, Ashanti, S H, yo, A S H A N T I, Queen, right here on YouTube. Because I think you'll get a better idea of people that are more in the main. I, I wasn't in the mainstream in the United States, so I, I'm probably not the best person to say what certain age groups, especially, are doing for fun. I wouldn't even know. I mean, in that level, no, I wouldn't even know. So I'm not going to even try to guess. So yeah, it depends on who you are. But but I'm going to say this. Cause, so I think that you can have just as much fun and you go out for drinks. I'm assuming it's probably very similar to the way you would have fun and operate. Whatever you do here, there to have fun, I bet it's very, very similar. Very similar. Because, you know, people are people in the European ways everywhere. Uh, but... Um, it's a different culture at the same time. And the one thing that all African-Americans, I, I hear them say repeatedly, even when I went to one Africa, do not, if you want the West, this ain't the West. If you want the Western ways, the Western ways you've been associating, it's just not the Western way. It's if you want that familiarity, that stuff. Somebody say, yeah, I want to see the, the streets or the buildings or something other than the dirt roads because I want that familiarity. But you ain't ready to leave, not you, but those people that want that. It's just, and I, I, I mean, that's hard to say, but I know that the regular is, well, no, I don't call it regular. I'm saying the things that the people would say, what we do for fun, it's here. Probably most things that you do, I'm sure. But again, check out her channel. I think she gives a little more of uh, that other life that you might be looking for, because it all exists in Ghana. It really does. Ghana's got it. Okay, so what do they do? What do they do for fun? Okay, thank you. Nap equals siesta. That's right. Well, I was thinking siesta. I said, well, Latin America siesta. What do they call it here, right? So yes. So another thing that, like I said. My feet, my feet look like something else. The feet need some love, honey. You on them. You do slippers a lot. You probably getting eaten up, bit, and all kinds of nonsense is going on. So just you know, take extra care of your feet when you come to Ghana. That's one thing I can say. Take extra care of your feet. Soak them. Be nice to them. You know, rub them. Just and wash them. You know. Another thing I find too, I remember I did this when I first started at the hotel when I was at Nicolese, and another time when I was at the family's and I was living over there for two weeks. You're gonna take two baths a day. Maybe they, I don't know, they always fresh and clean, so maybe they do, but you're gonna take, they do two baths a day, or two shots, the morning when you get up, and also before you go to bed, you're gonna sleep better. And, that, and then plus it allows you to really keep, make sure your feet stay, you know, clean and healthy, or check, because I mean, like I got numerous bites and I don't know when this all happened, but it is, and they're right on the bottom of my feet. So sometimes I guess that's all the mosquitoes can get, okay? So anyway, uh, stay on your vitamins, and eat the right foods, and you will be fine. You will be fine. All right, ladies, I've been on way long, and so I am going to say good night. Good evening, Monique. Hey, darling. So ladies, please like. So everything's in the description box. The upcoming class, the class tonight with Elacia off the chain by the virtual assistant. Uh, next week, we got Major Glenn Beauty. I'm going to talk about how to beat our faces no, in a good way. No. Uh, yeah, uh, with Major Glenn. And then in the moment, we got Dr. LaRonda Harmon with the uh, life coaching situation, which is going to be so beautiful. So, but you can also like, share, subscribe, comment. And if you want to donate to a system because you was moved, maybe I answered some questions you wanted and you want to donate, you can use my Cash App or PayPal or both. They're all in the description box already, all classes, old, new, go to the website, that's in the description box, join, get on the mailing list so I can send special things to you, all in the description box right now, check it out. If you have a thumbs up, please do so. For some people, thank you so much for being on this evening. And I'm going to go in this room, and I will see you all in the next video. Me, die, see you. Peace and blessings.